Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see everyone here. <laughs> um, I hope you can all hear me all right. Um, I can see some of you know me already. Uh, my name's Duncan and I run Tapsol Theory. We're a poetry publisher based in a uh, rural Aberdeenshire. More specifically, Tarland, and even more specifically, this room that you see <laughs> behind you, which is Tapsal Theory HQ. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. It's funny seeing everyone via the digital ether. Um, I think one day we will have an actual a proper, well, not proper, but a real life launch for this <laughs> in a real life bookshop with real life people that you can stand close to if you want and all that sort of thing. Who knows when, probably, you know, end of the summer or something like that, but we'll just have to see how the world turns. Uh, but for now, Zoom will have to do, and a good job it's doing of it, I think. And this is the book that we're launching. Uh, Cocoon by Russell Jones. It's our second book. So far, we've mostly been a poetry pamphlet press. Last year, we did our first book late last year. Pleased that it's Russell that we're publishing in such a format. Um, yeah, we published Russell in 2018 in a pamphlet called Dark Matters, which was a collection of sci fi poetry, which was Ace. Um, and which did really well. And so we're really pleased to be bringing out a book of his. Russell is a grand poet. This is his sixth collection of poetry, but he's not only a poet, he's also a editor and a writer of short stories and young, young adult fiction and all sorts of things. A, a talented man all around. You can purchase copies of the book via the website, which of course is always is greatly encouraged and will help us out loads. And there should be a link in the group chat that you can click on, hopefully, if it works. Uh, and so I, that would be grand. But I think I've probably spoken enough and I hope that with the wonders of modern technology, Russell Jones should be up next to read some of his poems. Russell, are you there? Hello, yes. Hi. Hi. I couldn't unmute myself, but it's been done for me. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming along to my book launch. Um, as you can see, here it is, Cocoon. Um, you can chat in the side here if you want to talk about me or anything while it's going on. You can type messages to each other. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Duncan for my intro. Um, also, thank you so much to Tap Saltieri for producing like such a beautiful book. Obviously, I can't speak for the poems because uh, I wrote them. However, um, the book itself is really beautiful. And if you do buy it, then I think you'll appreciate the kind of quality that's gone into it. And it's been great working with a small press who will listen to things like, hey, can you change that comma? Can you change the spacing between these things and not get super annoyed at it? Um, so for me, this was a book about transformation. Um, and the worlds we create. This is the kind of the title cocoon. Um, and I'm going to read some of that tonight and we'll also see something else in about halfway through. Um, now, if you've ever been to one of my launches, you'll know that I, I make a gin for everyone. Um, and since you can't be here, I bought myself a bottle of champagne. Um, so I'll, I'll be enjoying some of that whilst you uh, have to sit here and uh, listen to some poetry. But I hope you'll think of me whilst I drink it. Anyway, so I'm going to start with um, a poem, a love poem, because I feel that love is uh, one of the most transformative forces that there is in the world, uh, especially during difficult times. And this one is um, sharing, the title is based on a line from a Jack Gilbert poem, and it's called By Insisting on Love, We Spoil It. To sit is enough. So we do, on the too big sofa, a coach train, in hookah cafes, minds like smoke and buttered fingertips. Ask for a shadow and I'll cast it for you. 
In the house we bought together, our nursery is unlikely to be filled. Fine. Soon we'll see the green light of Borealis through the toilet window. Let's tear the sky down, but be assured, unknowing isn't the half of it. The universe is tiny if we call it out, but each fold makes another crease we've not yet explored. And from love, naturally onto murder. Um, I was in Florida a few years ago with my partner. And if you've ever been to Florida, you'll know that there are lots of alligators. In fact, the place where we're staying had a sign saying, beware of the alligators. And I thought, wouldn't it be a, a good idea if you wanted to kill your partner or loved one, you could bring them to Florida and sort of just knock them uh, towards the alligators and that would, that would be the end of it. So that was the inspiration for this one. And it's called the Alligator Get Out Clause. Prehistory, an evil eye, sinister, sleek Mississippi Nisus, walking appellation, taut, primed to roll, a grizzled submarine. The alligator owns the pool. The 18 holes, the bayou, parking lot, riverside. Beware your trespass. Ancient, hungry, vacant. The alligator does not care about your kids, your direct debits, cholesterol, insurance waivers. The alligator does not know forgiveness is inhumanly patient. Long and quiet, you cease in its alien eyes. When it moves, don't resist. The alligator has spent millennia perfecting its bite. One of the uh, big influences in my poetic life, if you've ever met me, I'm sure you'd know this, is Edwin Morgan. Uh, who I managed to speak with personally in, in his uh, nursing home before he died. He was obviously very interested in ideas of uh, change and evolution, which I think has also come into my work. Uh, this poem starts with a quote from Edwin Morgan. Is it true that we come alive, not once, but many times? Um, so this, I, I was interested in this idea of, of rebirth. Um, and when I was at Jupiter Artland, Marjorie Lotfi Gill was running a writing session and there was a bomb there. And that's kind of what, it, what inspired this poem. So this poem is called Ignition. Is it true that we come alive not once, but many times? Edwin Morgan. What's born from smithereens? Heat and flesh. Wings that make angels for an instant. Letters are sent, news read, and in the drying ink, that instant remains. The field is the same, but never the same. The crop, like the earth, rotates, and the feather which brings the wind soon lines another nest. It was actually one of almost probably maybe the only poem I've ever written that hasn't changed since I first wrote it. Normally they would undergo a lot of edits, but for some reason that one just came out. And before we uh, kind of have something different um, to interject, I'll read one final poem in this section. Another love of mine is um, travel. I spend a lot of my money traveling, uh, what little money I have. and. Uh, a year or so ago, I was in Cambodia, uh, row, rowing down a river uh, to see the pink river dolphins. And um, I then looked into pink river dolphins and there are lots of myths about them in different countries. And this one, uh, this poem is based on one of those myths about pink river dolphins um, in Peru. And it's called The Pink River Dolphins of Peru. She lay on the banks of the Amazon sang of capybara. Oh, my long tooth love, great guinea, come to me, come. That was all. 
near innocence, wet hair drying. It grew dark, she tells the town, months later when she swells like spring waters. I was alone. So they gather with dead fish to tempt him. He bites, chatters, pink as cantuta, stands accused. They don't need more evidence than his serrated erectile jaw, his guilt-loaded eyes. Waters break. The town floods in to see her birth. Humans scream from bottlenose, waving five-prong flipper, umbilical to blowhole. It's common here, the midwife reports. A real myth. Please, stay away from the riversides. Also included in this book is um, are, I should say, five comic poems, uh, fully coloured, illustrated poems, versions of my comic, uh, my poems, um, which were illustrated by Mark Toner, Caroline Greville, Sarah Yulia Campbell, Eddie Ross, and Amy Lockwood. And tonight we're lucky enough um, to be able to watch one of those video comics, uh, one of these comic poems, sorry, in a video, which is Bjorn uh, by Amy Lockwood. And I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. I've been told the story of the sky. Dandelion seeds and dragon wings. Sifted dust and the flare of suns. I'll pull you over the heather hills, kick gravestones, ignore the whispers of wind through trees. At the peak is a great old bear gray and slow. We can ask about hibernation, but she will reply. When you sleep, do you worry you'll never wake? Do you cry at the blossoming city or weep when the woods shrink? She will sit and think. She is very wise. Brew tea. Hold us in her pillow soft arms. Her heart thudding like heavy rain. Until our hearts adopt her rhythm. Just as we've always wanted. Hi. My name's Amy Lockwood and I adapted Russell's poem Beyond into the comic you've just seen. So when Russell was initially looking for comic artists to work on Cocoon alongside him, I was immediately interested in being involved. I've been making comics for a few years now, but my degree was in English and I now tutor English to high school students. So I'm always interested in finding new and exciting ways to interpret literature and to make it more accessible to people who perhaps traditionally wouldn't seek it out. I think that illustrating a poem is a really great way to get an understanding of it. And I feel like comics can take that even further in building on the text to contribute new and interesting interpretations. When you adapt a poem into a comic, you're not just reproducing or retelling it in another form, but you're kind of adding something of yourself to it and your own ideas about what the story means. So that was really why I wanted to be involved in this project because I love poetry and I love comics and I'm really fascinated by the ways that they can intersect and offer something valuable to each other as well as to the reader, hopefully. <laughs> Initially, Russell gave me a choice of poems to adapt into a comic and Bjorn immediately stuck out to me as the one I wanted to work with. There's that first line, I've been told the story of the sky that really spoke to me. 
I grew up obsessed with mythology and astronomy and the stories behind the constellations. So that's straight away where my mind went on reading those words. And in that sense, the poem immediately felt kind of perfect for me and my interests. I knew I wanted to work something of that astronomical, mythological connection into the comic. I think you can see that in the way I've incorporated the night sky throughout the artwork. I feel like I've maybe even like amplified its importance in my adaptation, like maybe even beyond what was intended by Russell, I don't know. I was also heavily inspired by what I read as a reference to the northern lights in the poem. There's the line, sifted dust and the flare of suns, which very much said Aurora to me, though, like, again, I don't know for sure that that's what Russell intended. Regardless, though, I kind of ran with it and made it the inspiration for the comic's colour scheme with these kinds of luminous greens and pinks throughout it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't really know exactly what was in Russell's head while writing the poem, but those were the aspects that really kind of stuck out and inspired me. And I think that kind of illustrates quite well how I personally approached the task of adapting the poem into a comic. I was trying not to just represent it really literally or to try too hard to get into Russell's head, but instead to build on the ideas within it that really captivated me personally. So for instance, on the third page, you get that line, do you cry at the blossoming city, which I think is really beautiful. And I've accompanied it with this sequence where the constellation Ursa Major, the great bear, slowly vanishes as the human city grows alongside it and kind of takes over. To try and suggest that as light pollution takes over the night sky, we might also lose something of that deep connection we have to the environment that we crave. And that's a key message that I took from the poem from Bustle's words. I think a lot of people can relate to, I mean, I certainly relate to it really heavily. Um, we want something other than this kind of hectic life that we've built up for ourselves. So that's what I really wanted to amplify. And I wanted to make that final scene where the characters are finally embraced by that like great mythological bear have a really sort of comforting feeling, like coming home like a cocoon, I guess. Um, so yeah, I really loved the poem. Um, it felt like it could have been written specifically for me, although in this case it wasn't. Um, so I'm really glad to have had the opportunity to work with it in this way, and I hope that I've done it justice. Um, I'll pass you back over to Russell for some more poetry now. Thank you, but yeah, Amy. I hope you enjoyed the comic. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, hopefully it comes back to me now. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, Amy. It was really interesting to hear everything you had to say about it, because obviously I didn't know all of that. Um, and just the way that you interpreted it. I, I just think it's such a beautifully, like the images are just so beautiful and go so well with the, uh, with the words. And I never would have thought of doing that myself. So it's just wonderful to see. And if anyone was interested, I will upload that video onto YouTube and share it on social media later so that you can catch all of it. Cause I think we missed uh, a little bit of the illustration at the start. Um, so I'll do that later. And Amy and I are also gonna be working on a, a much larger comic uh, project. So if you're interested in that, then uh, I'm sure we'll be shouting about it when, when, you know, when it's a bit further down the line. But um, from one Amy to another, uh, my sister is called Amy and um, she's a doctor. And so she's having a bit of a, a difficult time at the moment, I'm sure. But uh, when we were young, we would um, fight a lot, uh, like physically as well as sort of emotionally and mentally. Um, I remember I, I smashed her in the mouth of the tennis racket and knocked one of her teeth out and she still got a wonky tooth where the other one came through. Um, and she would do, she was older than me, or she still is, and uh, does karate, and she would sort of pin me to the ground and um, sort of torment me. <laughs> so anyway, obviously things change when you get older, uh, they transform. Um, so this is a poem inspired by that. Um, and the title is taken from Stereophonics song. Um, Stereophonics were one of my favorite bands growing up, um, living on kind of the border of England and Wales. And it's called, You Gotta Go There to Come Back. 
We were out, so it must have been summer. Rocks ready to skull the other, fueled by love-blind anarchy of a sister and brother. That led to smashed windows, accusations, the day we bled the radiators, unhinged from walls with one another's heads. The night I slammed your finger in the fire door. For weeks, we watched the nail blacken and peel away. I have your features tattooed in me, your face when you realized I couldn't be held to the ground anymore, that nature had granted me unbrotherly strength. I think that's when you tore away, and now we've got to go there to come back, to feel the rocks, the, the burning metal against our skin, to hear the shatter of childhood, feel it break and reform. At the dinner table, you pass me a glance. We don't shirk memories, but talk. Look over the canvas of the garden, watch birds prune and squabble. We know we have to see each bolt strike as murmuration, the fleeting needs and flocking inclinations. And um, my penultimate poem is uh, about old age, really, and death, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's, it's, not as, it's not as miserable as it sounds, for me, at least. Um, whilst I wrote this book, two of my grandparents died. One just before the virus happened, so um, no poems about that yet. But the other was uh, my granddad. And I have a lot of um, nice memories of me and him in the garden. He, he liked to garden a lot. He'd grow vegetables, which my gran would cook. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the, the premise for this one, the beginnings. It's called Up the Garden. Our slabbed path fixes again. Petunia pink on sage green through the soil of memory. And I imagine the season's beans climbing. A plot of lettuce heads. You and me clasp hands like decades never passed us. We roll by pansy pots and marigold beds, past gravestones for long gone cats, beneath the vine heavy white lattice archway. We cast so many snails over neighbors' fences, so many slugs were shriveled by our cobalt pelts. So many of our kites flew when others fell. It's hard for us both not to wither under the past. Someone's cut the gorse back. The birds and butterflies have fled. Your shattered legs will make it up the steady steps to the shed where our tools have been unheld too long and rusted. So our bones rest in the conservatory. We see ourselves on the plates of glass. You twist yarns, make me a child again before the aches ended at last. Somehow, before we depart, you find enough mercy to say, that's nature, however much we hate it. And from death, and old age, to love and old age, so we've come full circle. Uh, and this will be my final poem, and I'll just say a few thanks, and I'll pass you back to Duncan. Um, as I said before, I feel like love is transformative, and uh, let's go with that. Let us be mauled by the ocean. I hope we age as beaches do, whipped cliffs into reefs of sand, Coasts swept into fruit-washed shores. Let currents bind and tear us in two, make flotsam of our thighs and hands and leave us irreversibly sawn. Dock the orange lifeboats. We'll break through the white top waves, dive overboard, stand barefoot on urchins, 
and draw the mollusk from the pearl, the antenna from the prawn, the land from snowmelt and estuaries. I want us to pour dark waters down our sunlit shirts and screw fine ports, fly crossbone flags to treasure maps, steer hard into the inevitable storms. So just a few thank yous as I have a sip. First, thank you uh, to Tap Saltiri. They've done a really great job in the book. Uh, take a look if you don't believe me. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but, but buy the book, please do uh, support them. And I hope you enjoy it. If you do, leave a review, send me a message. Send me, send me a bottle of champagne if you want to, that's fine. Um, I'd like to thank Noel, um, who produced all of this. He's been the one in charge of the tech. Um, so thank you to Noel from Shore Infinity. Uh, big thanks to Amy Lockwood, who's here um, for talking about her comic and how she made it. I'm looking forward to kind of revisiting that when I, when I watch this back um, so I can really take in what you said. And it's such a beautiful comic. And finally, just thank you to all of you for coming and listening to me go on. Um, please buy the book, buy the book for yourselves and other people and um, enjoy it. Uh, watch this space because I'll be uploading videos of some of the comics and, and other content and we'll be doing a live launch when we're all allowed back into civilization. Uh, thanks again to everyone and I'll pass you back. To me. Yeah, thanks very much Russell. That's amazing. Um, you've basically just done all the things that I was going to do anyway, so <laughs> I'll keep this pretty brief. Just want to say again, thanks to everyone for Though you can't really say coming, can you? Like tuning in, I suppose, is the best way of doing it. Um, and I had meant to say a bit more about the comics in the book at the introduction, but I got distracted by everyone's faces and that wee strip across the screen. Um, there's some amazing comics in it. This one's by Edward Ross. Um, and yeah, there's some beautiful things in it. And it's really cool to be able to do this and to see the poems like reinterpreted in such a sort of radical way. And it's interesting because it's actually one of the comic poems in this, a, an official guide to surviving the invasion, is being also made into a short horror film, which you can, I think there's links to on our website. It should be coming out quite soon. And that's really cool as well, seeing an even more radical reinterpretation of a poem. And I don't know, I think there must be something about Russell's poetry that particularly lends itself to such things. Um, don't know, maybe it's his sort of the narrative and the way he can sort of tell these things that probably appeals to folk. Um, but anyway, I will stop rambling on. Thanks very much for coming. Really good to see all your faces. You can buy the book. We heartily recommend it. The link is in the chat. And hopefully we will see you in real life sometime in the near future. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. <laughs>